In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use mass effects in a domino reactor. So what I've done is I've set up a simple scene with three different levels, a slide, and some pinball bars, and a domino. So in your scene, you want to start off with a domino. Um, I made a box. You can use chamfer boxes, which is also pretty common. Yeah. And I made it... 25 by 8 by 45 gives you a decent size here. And what you want to do is the first domino, you want to stand alone. So the second domino, I'm going to make a copy. And then the rest of my dominoes from then on out can be instances. The reason why you want to do this is because we're going to make the first domino kinematic and the rest are going to be dynamic. So you don't want to change that first domino at all. So I'm going to go ahead and select these dominoes and move them down to the second level. And you want to keep in mind how the dominoes are falling and how they're going to affect each other once they've also fallen. So I want to consider how this domino on the top tier is going to hit the one on the second tier. Alright, so now that I have my scene set up with the dominoes, I'm going to create a ball. So I'll just use a simple sphere here and draw that out in my top viewport. I want to make sure that it's small enough to fit through the side, through the slide, but still big enough where you can actually see it. So here we can see that it's aligned with the slide and with the domino actually move this over just a little bit. Maybe bump the radius down to 10. And now we're ready to start using mass effects. So at the first domino, you want to make sure you have your mass effects toolbar which is located up here. So if you right click in an empty area of your navigation, just go down to Mass Effects Toolbar and you can go ahead and dock it anywhere you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and set my first domino as kinematic. And I want to check to make sure that its shape type is set to box. Um, this is going to give you this white bounding box that's going to attach to the shape and make the physics work within 3ds Max. And I'm going to set the static friction, the dynamic friction, and the bounciness to zero. This way it's not going to have any kind of after effects. So now for the second domino and the rest of them, I'm going to set it as a dynamic rigid body. And you'll see that if I select each domino here on out, it will also have the same properties. I'm also going to change these to 0, 0, and 0. And double check that my shape type is set to box. So our dominoes are set up. Now I'm going to change these three tiers to be static objects. Static objects are just saying that they are present and they are interacting with the scene, um, but they are not having an outward force on anything within it. So all of these are instances, so they automatically become static. If you have a shape other than anything other than a box, um, you might want to consider changing the shape type down here, otherwise your piece may not work as best as it can. And the plane is also going to become a static rigid body. 
with the static friction and the dynamic friction set to zero and the bouncing is also set to maybe 0 0.5 because when the sphere rolls down the slide here, I might want to see it bounce. It's almost done. The sphere is also going to become dynamic and the shape type is going to be sphere. You'll see how that mesh changes in there. Originally it was set to box, which wouldn't work, but sphere allows it to recognize the shape and it'll roll properly. Like the plane and the tiers, the slide is going to be static with the shape type as original. If you have a shape that you created yourself, you always want to set it as original um, just because that bounding box will take on its new properties. And these pinball wizards right here, I made them with an editable poly and just created this actual hitter part as a detached object. So these are going to be set to dynamic. whereas the part that they're attached to are going to be static. And there are instances, so that should take care of that. Let's just make sure these are set to original as well. Our convex should work. All right, now I'm going to animate the first domino. And if you ever have a kinematic domino in your set, which you probably will, or depending on what you're working on, you want to make sure it's the rigid body type is set to kinematic until frame X. So I'm going to bump up my time configuration here. Let's just say 350. And from frame 0 to 5, this domino, make sure you turn on auto key, this domino is going to tilt and hit the domino next to it. So that looks good. So now it's going to be kinematic until frame 5. As you notice, my pivot point is down here at the bottom, which is allowing me to tilt my domino like this. If yours is not like that, go to the Hierarchy tab, Effect Pivot Only, and using your Select and Move tool, you can just move that gizmo up and down, and then uncheck Effect Pivot Only to get back to where you want to go. So by moving my time slider, you'll see that my domino can now move. So now that we have our scene set up, we're going to go ahead and play it. So instead of pressing play on where you usually play your animation, you want to actually go to the Mass Effects toolbar and press the play button here and we'll see our dominoes fall. So as we can see here, the dominoes weren't set up as best as they could be. So I'm going to go ahead and delete a couple here. Maybe delete this one, and delete this one, and we'll try moving these back and see if that gives us a better playback. A little bit better, but now let's actually go ahead and maybe get rid of these two dominoes. Almost. And it's not quite liking what we're doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this domino and I'm just going to move a couple of these down. And remember, we want to make these copies instances.
area. So now we can see that our ball isn't moving any further, but what you can do in this case is you can actually go ahead and just change the mass of the object and putz around with it from there. If you have any questions, please comment on the video and I'll get back to it as soon as I can.